Jay heard me uh, do half a song when he was a college student in the early 90s. And I stopped playing for 15 years. So dreams never die. It's just so fascinating to have this opportunity. Thank you, Victoria, the film festival, Ricardo, Anthony, everybody. Jay Duplass, I'm so glad that he's going to be able to be here via Skype to talk about this. My dream has actually come true because of this, you know, literally, you know, being able to perform in theaters with my unique brand of music. This song's called um, Beautiful Vibrations. Beautiful vibrations, nation to nation, echo proclamation, all over brave new world. Once were limitations, no more such frustration, organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need and more. Our greatest inspiration, way beyond imagination. If you can see what you believe, this is life worth living for. Morphing revelations, rapid transformation, organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need and more. Beautiful vibrations, nation to nation. Echo proclamation, all over brave new world. Once were limitations, no more such frustration. Organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need and more. Our greatest inspiration, way beyond imagination. But if you can see what you believe, then this is life worth living for. Morphing revelations, rapid transformation. Organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need and more. Morphing revelations, rapid transformation. Organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need and more. Morphing revelations, rapid transformation. Organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need and more. Organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need and more. Organic oxygen to breathe. Organic oxygen to breathe. Organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need. Organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need and more. Thank you all so much. I sure appreciate it. <laughs> wow, he's already here. Hey, Jay, how are you doing? Where are you, Kev? I'm in like cyberspace. I can't see you. This anything. is incredible. Welcome to the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, well, okay, so uh, I'm here, Elizabeth, uh, with Kevin on stage, and we have uh, a full house here, and uh, Anthony is going to uh, moderate. Can, can we hear you, Anthony? Yeah, I think so. Can you guys hear me down there? Yeah. All right, Okay, super. so there's, there's four people here, but um, yeah, let's have a conversation. I guess, Anthony, take it, take it from here. Well, I'm, just, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. You guys have been hearing my voice a lot. I want to just take this opportunity to introduce you guys to J.D. Plas. He's the director of this film, and um, Jay, you know, take it away, man. Just tell us a little bit about what, how this came to be. This is your first documentary, and how did you choose Kevin? Um, I've always been obsessed with documentaries. Um, yeah, I would probably do them full time if they didn't um, take years off of your life and make you broke. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, I think. When I, at the point when I realized that Errol Morris, probably the most celebrated documentarian, makes his quote unquote money in commercials, I realized that, you know, um, I better stick with narrative stuff. But um, all my inspiration has always come from real life, and, and in particular with, with films, I've been um, more insp inspired by documentaries than I have by, um, you know, mainstream films. Um, so I always knew I wanted to do one. I just needed to wait for the right time and the right person, and you know, like it, like I explained uh, in, the, in the film itself, you know, 
in the early 90s in Austin, Texas. Um, Kevin was kind of, I mean, you know, Kevin is the most inspired person that I've ever known in my life. And he's been kind of a beacon and sort of like a touchstone for me over the years to, you know, to continue to stay true to who I am and, and, and whatever channels are coming through me. So um, I think it was a few years back when, when I was doing some studio work. And, you know, I'm very blessed to be able to make the studio films that I make, but, you know, a lot of times you are making decisions as a committee. You are, um, every time you want to do something, you have to run it up the flagpole and, right. and uh, not necessarily get approval, but at least articulate why you're doing it, what you're doing, and, you know, uh, all the reasons behind it and what you hope to achieve by doing it. Um, and I just started having this yearning to go back to making films the way I used to and the way that my brother and I did, which is caveman style, which is just <laughs> get some stuff up and running, you know, let's, 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 let's put some stuff in front of us, let's film it and let's, let's modify it as it goes and, and, you know, and, and Kevin in particular started to come to mind, I started, I, I'd always been wondering what was going on with him, where he was, what, it, what was happening with him and so I, I sent him that email and um, luckily he responded and, you know, we embarked upon a, you know, three, four year journey that's, you know, continuing right now. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this is a life experience first and a, um, and a movie second. And, the, and, you know, the movie happens to be quote unquote over, but the life experience continues. I mean, I saw Kevin two nights ago in Los Angeles. He had two engagements. He played here um, at night. I was able, I just had a baby boy. so. I, I was able to steal away for like an hour and 22 minutes and <laughs> see Kevin play and the documentary played and you know now I'm able to do the Skype with you guys so it's been an incredible um, journey and I am just feel happy and, and lucky to be a part of it. Kevin, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you refound that and, and what it means to you now to be back in touch with that. Um, Literally, as we speak, maybe a little bit, but like what's going on now, we talk about this life project or the life story that's continuing. It's literally been now that I actually can, I feel now that I'm stepping back into what I used to do. I had no idea whatever that's, however those invisible connects, whatever that is, it's tangible. We may not be able to see it, but it's tangible. That gift, that art, that flow that stream that purity it's not just something to take for granted just like i'm speaking words you know ordering a sandwich somewhere it, this it's it, it took me years over a decade to to slow the slow drip process i'm so thankful for it um i don't even know how to describe it i didn't know that it was actually really happening consciously until jay started asking these questions of me in the beginning of the documentary i didn't know that i've learned so much through this process and i'm so thankful to have the opportunity it's a very rare opportunity to have an, an artist like myself that's non-commercial per se have the ability to go through all of this um, technical and creative process with someone who's a professional and who loves art and appreciates it as much as jay does so um, i'm very thankful to be able to discover have a self-discovery with artists so hope i can be an inspiration to artists and people in general so yeah thanks jay i appreciate it in my early 20s, I, I tried to make a lot of decisions about filmmaking. I tried to, to make films from a, uh, a very um, calculated point of view, I guess. Uh, you know, I went to film school in Austin in the early 90s. I wanted to be the Coen brothers. Everybody yeah. wanted to be the Coen brothers, <laughs> but I have news for you. They're the Coen brothers, and they're <laughs> being the Coen brothers. Yeah. Um, and so I learned that lesson the hard way. Um, is don't try to be the Coen brothers, they have the corner on that market. Um, but, you know, I, I would just say that in general, uh, my, the biggest part of my journey, I guess, as an artist has been learning how to um, stop thinking very consciously about what I'm doing and, and, and sort of try to just open the channels and let whatever's trying to come through, come through. And, and that's something that, you know, just knowing Kevin, knowing who he was, listening to his music helped that process. I mean, Kevin is really the ultimate in, in a channel. You know, he, his whole MO is getting his, his, himself out of the way and essentially tuning his spirit and tuning his body, tuning his mind um, to 
the frequencies that, yeah. you know, it sounds crazy. I mean, I'm like, I'm in, I'm in Los Angeles right now. I'm like, I'm like, oh God, I sound like a total weird new age dude out here. I should probably have a wheatgrass shot right now. <laughs> 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 but uh, you know, I, I I really I do believe it, and I, I and I don't and even and, you know I think it even runs deeper than that. I don't think it's about art, like Kevin said in his interview in like God back in 1990 probably. I think that um, everyone is is an artist and everyone is a creator, and ultimately everyone's goal is to clarify and to purify themselves so that the whatever needs to come through um, can come through because if it's if you view art and life as, as something that you yourself are creating as a very um, I guess limited and egoic um, perspective on things and if you can open the channels and let things work through you that are way bigger than your tiny mind can come up with um, you know, you're going to come up with stuff that you couldn't even imagine. And I think the the perfect example of this is when, you know, in my all my 20s, I made a lot of films and they were terrible and they're currently <laughs> hiding in the basement of my mom's house. Um, and, uh, you know, it wasn't until, um, uh, I guess it was uh, 2002, um, when I was just really depressed and I was, um, you know, figuring out I had to quit this because I wasn't any good at it. And then my brother said, no, we're making a movie today. And um, I said, we don't have lights, we don't have crew members, we don't have any of that. And he's like, I don't care, we have mom and dad's little video camera. And so what we did is, um, he said, just come up with an idea. And, and so I came up with this idea about, that had happened to me a week before, which is me, um, trying to perfect the personal reading of my answering machine, failing to do so, and then having a nervous breakdown, which is hilarious in retrospect, but at the time it was totally tragic, you know? So we shot this short film, we bought a tape at like 7-Eleven, and we shot the short film for $3.50 and on a home video camera, and it went to Sundance, and it got written up in variety uh, as like one of the best shorts at Sundance that year. We got an agent, we got a lawyer. But I think most importantly, my whole life I had been trying to make films from this intellectual sort of like perspective, you know, and the, the movies were just terrible. And then finally, I just made a movie about something that I really didn't understand and that just terrified me and made me giggle at the same time, you know, and it really, it was very personal and it was embarrassing <laughs> and it was, you know, ridiculous. Um, so I just made a movie about a guy trying to perfect his answering machine message and lo and behold uh, Variety writes about it and they're like the Duplass brothers have created an epic film of man versus machine proportions <laughs> um, they, were, they started writing about all these like uh, massive you know uh, you know critical cultural theory um, wow <laughs> as if we had employed all these things and the reality was is like I finally just got out of the way of the film that needed to be made. And I, I mean, I just feel like I was just lucky that I was there when it happened, basically. Um, <laughs> it sounds like ridiculous, but you know. You were, you were the wrong. vehicle that, that brought the tape. That's about it. You, you got the tape yeah, into the I, camera yeah, and the rest yeah, happened. I the tape and you know, I basically just made fun of myself for a <laughs> one, two minute tape. And that was, that's what she wrote. And that's basically what we've been doing ever since. And, you know, talking to you about this now and just, you know, thinking about it, you know, with Kevin, it's, it's returning to a pure process and, and exactly the type of process and the type of person that you had just described that Kevin is. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's amazing. Um, Kevin, do uh, you have anything you want to say to Jay? Oh, thank you, Jay. Um, um, I didn't know you and you didn't tell me the, who you were when we first met via email. And the more that I hear you speak about your process and how inspired you are about mine, you know, I just, uh, now the, the script has been flipped. <laughs> you are an amazing artist and I'm so glad to be, that I had the opportunity to collaborate with you like this. There's so much depth to what you do and what your, you and your brother um, do with your films. It's real subtle and some people 
want to go see Transformers or something, but I'm like, no, these guys are not going anywhere for a while. And I appreciate and looking so forward to the art that you're about to, to provide. So, yeah, I thank you. And you're my hero. There's no doubt about that. There's you, my hero, brother. I appreciate you. This opportunity is once in a lifetime for an artist like me. It really is. Well, it's, it's mutual for me. You're, 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 uh, you're my hero, too, so <laughs> thanks, buddy. I appreciate you, my brother. <laughs> thanks a lot, man. Hey, uh, Elizabeth, let's open it up for some questions. Um, anybody in the audience have some questions? Ask me anything. Oh, yes. OK, you. <laughs> That's a good question. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, repeat the question yeah. so Jay can hear it. Go ahead. Uh, the question was, have I ever played with anyone else? Have I ever been in a band? You know, and the answer is no. And it would be impossible for y'all to believe or understand if you're not a guitar player or an artist. I can't, I don't, I, what I do, I'm amazed that I could even do anything at all because I come from a standpoint of not being able to perform. And I found it's hard to play and sing at the same time for a lot of people. And I found a way to make, I could open my mouth and do that. That became the genesis of my unique style. I have no idea how to do that in a band setting with all this other foundation going. So um, I'm open to the ex that experiment, but I absolutely, unless I'm horrified of it, I don't know how to do it. So thank you, that's a good call. Are you a guitar player or musician? Yeah, do you play solo or are you in a band? Okay, so you'll recognize this. I'm one of those that can't separate it in the studio. You have to record me live. I can't do my guitar separate and then sing over it later. They're connected. So yeah, thanks for the question. We've got time for a couple of more. We're, we're, we're right at 5 o'clock right now, but let's, yeah. let's open it up for a couple more questions. Any other questions? Actually, I think, I think we're not All right. questionless. Well, oh, well, wait, let's... over here. Sorry, one more. No. Did he ever have a teacher is the question. I tried and I just, my brain, when you put it in a formula, I know that it's a good and it's not like it's a bad thing. I don't read, I just, my, something's going on with me to my brain does it. I have to like, it has to like get distilled first for like 30 years or at least a year before I can do anything with it. So I noodle around until I find these accidental pockets. I don't know why, but thank you for the question. I just, uh, something about studying. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. But. All right. All right, Jay. I really appreciate you stopping in, man. This was awesome. And um, you guys go see uh, Jeff that lives at home. And Kevin's got some CDs and some DVDs if you guys want to pick it up. And Kevin, I'd like to invite you into our VIP area if you'd like to come play for those folks in there at 6 o'clock. That way we can get you a little more playing time. What do you say? Okay, thank you. I'd love to. Awesome. Thank you, Jay. Thank God you. bless you, my brother. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. <laughs>